Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Christopher David Lawson of NEPA and today we're going to be installing this anti-gravity lithium battery 360 cranking amps versus the 210 stock Polaris cranking amp battery that we all know as Scout and Scout 60 owners and of course Scout Bobber owners is really not that good of a battery for an engine like this. But let's go ahead and get the video started. You think you know me. Okay everybody, before we install this anti-gravity battery, we're going to talk about it a little bit. One of the first things you'll notice, anti-gravity. This battery actually is claimed to weigh about 2.4 pounds. The stock Polaris battery or any similar lead acid battery that will go into your Indian Scout actually weighs closer to 10 pounds. So you're saving at least 7 pounds. That's not a big weight savings. But over time, if you do any modifications to your bike, seven pounds is seven pounds. Uh, another thing we'll show you. Restart technology. Something you won't see in any other battery out there. And what this is, it's actually not a jump starter per se. What it is, it has technology built into the battery that will actually shut the battery off before it becomes completely discharged. Or it will also shut the battery off to keep it from getting overcharged which is a good thing. You don't want to destroy this battery. Because actually one of the low things with this battery, I would say, is that it's double the price of a normal battery. However, they claim that this lithium battery will actually last two times as long as a regular battery. So, you're actually getting your money's worth. If you keep this bike for six, seven years, and then you've got your money's worth right there. So, and like I said, if you have an Indian Scout, you live in colder weather, like I do here in NEPA, um, you get 20 degree days. Now, most people won't ride. However, I will. I will ride whenever the roads are clear. The problem is, the 210 cold cranking app battery that comes stock with this bike will not start this bike. I have had this bike on a charger before and tried to come out here and start it in the winter, and it still won't start, even plugged into a charger. That's pretty piss poor as far as I'm concerned. For a motorcycle like this, a premium American motorcycle, you can't start it, even if it's on a charger. That's not very good. Now, mine is a 2018. Well, after 2018, I think the 19s and the 20s, yes, Polaris upgraded the batteries. They went to a 220 cold cranking amps. Come on, 10 more cranking amps? What's that going to do? That's not really going to help you out. Now this battery here is 360 cold cranking amps. You can also get one that's 480 cold cranking amps for another $30, I think it was. But to me, that's overkill. Yes, you can do that if you want. $30 isn't a big deal if you want 300, 480 cold cranking amps. But going from 210 to 360, hey, that's good enough for me. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed. I'm going to have to pull my seat off. I have to pull a few other things off to get to the battery, but let's get going on. Okay, one of the first things you got to do is obviously pull your seat off. I have an aftermarket seat with a sheepskin. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off now. Basically, to pull the seat off, all you do is, this is a Mustang seat, but it still mounts the same as a stock seat. Just pull up on the front, grab it, and wiggle it. Okay, as you can see here, there's several things I'm going to have to move to get to the battery, which is right here. And I have an aftermarket GPS connected to my bike. This is the pack here. But you're going to have to pull this off. You're going to have to pull these here. This is the vent for the gas tank. And basically you got to pull your fuse box. And probably unhook a couple wires. There's your positive and your negative comes through here to the other side. Okay, the first thing you got to do, this is fairly simple. Um, you got to remove your fuse box. And what we'll do, I'll try to do this one-handed so you can see me do it. Uh, there's a little lever right here on your fuse box. Go ahead and push that And that should slide right out. It's a little bit more of a pain when you're doing it with one hand, but And then you get your fuse box right out of the way and now you have access to your battery Which is also held down with a bracket right here. You're gonna have to remove this bracket With that bolt. Of course, there's your negative. There's your positive and Of course, you can see I've got a bunch of stuff connected to that we're going to go ahead and pull that battery out now. 
this is pretty self-explanatory a couple Phillips heads or whatever to pull that out I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now okay just for reference too that's a half inch socket I'm using to pull that bracket off the top of the battery and of course if you want to you can use a 10 millimeter socket to pull the uh, posts off the battery, the cables off the battery. All right, I got the bracket bolt out. I got the negative cable out of the way. You will actually have to wiggle this bracket a little bit to get it out because it kind of hooks down in there a little bit. It's hard to show you, but it just has that one bolt that holds it in there. It'll take a minute to get it out of there. You figure it's been in there for three years on my bike now, so, but you can get it out. Now all I got left is the uh, positive cable. Right, basically what I'm trying to do now, I had the battery pulled back a little bit. Just have to kind of work your way around the wires. Try not to touch your negatives and your positives back to the battery. Uh, this point I got to use both hands because I got to kind of wiggle that thing out a little bit. All right, everybody, I got that battery out. Pretty nasty in there. I think I'm going to try and clean all this up before I put the new battery in. But as you can see, they are slightly different. The thing is with these anti-gravity lithium batteries, you can actually install those on their side. You can lay them on their side, their back, whatever. There's no liquid in there. So that will fit. Just a little bit smaller actually, but we're going to go ahead and weigh these now. Let's put the uh, original Polaris battery on the scale first. What's that say? Nine and a half pounds. Alright, let's take the stock one off. Try this again. We'll put the uh, anti-gravity battery on there. Oop. Let's try that again. It's not even registered. Alright folks, this battery is so light, my scale won't even actually pick it up. But it, it does feel like a toy battery. Okay, since I'm going to be installing this battery sideways, uh, this battery is actually still going to be a little shorter than the stock battery. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of this rubber mat I have laying around. It's actually the piece of flooring that I cut out for the uh, battery for the solar panel I have here in the scout shed. So, But that will bring the battery up so it's fairly even. And just for reference, if you want to do this install yourself, that piece of rubber was cut to 5 inches long by about 3 and a quarter. Another piece of advice I'm going to give you too, before installing the battery, obviously you've got to connect the negative to the uh, negative side. You're going to have to play around with the wires. Obviously this is a custom install. It's not factory. Um, I was initially going to try and run my accessories off the other positive because uh, this comes with two positives and two negatives. But it's really close to the negative wire cable and everything so I'm just going to leave that one covered. So all my negatives are grounded to the frame. Uh, all my positives for my accessories and everything for the bike are all on the positive on the top side everything's tightened down pretty good i haven't put my fuse box box fuse box back in yet and i haven't put the bracket back in yet but you can see it fits in there pretty good um it's definitely a lot lighter easier to get in and out than the stock battery was but i'm going to go ahead and open up the shed now we're going to fire up the bike and see if everything's okay before i finish up this install that's a good sign the lights just came on let me see let me turn that over we are at 13 volts right now. That's pretty good. The stock battery never did that. I'll click the starter button. It dropped me to 12.8, 12.9. Still pretty good. Not even starting it. It's no drain on the battery yet. Let's fire it up. Bike is still having a hard time starting. That's weird. Let's try it again. interesting it didn't fire up the first time it's doing the same thing the other battery did maybe i have to hit the restart let's try again all right i hit the restart on the battery let's go ahead and see what it does now try and fire this up one more time turn the key on same 13.1 click the starter everybody I didn't get any codes or anything I still need to uh, neaten up some of the wires and get everything back together but actually before I finish this install I'm going to let the bike sit for about 10 minutes and cool off uh, see if I have any issues with it then we'll go ahead and try to fire it up again 
Michael. All right, everybody, it's been about 15 minutes since we tried starting it up last. Let's go ahead and get this fired up now. All right, that's a good sign, folks. Started right up this time. I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together and make sure it all fits back together good. I don't seem to be having any issues, but... I said this is a nice custom install on my Indian Scout 60. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a better upgrade for the battery. Obviously the stock battery is not very good in the winter. It's also about 35 degrees out today. So not super cold but still cold enough. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.